Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International. Today, part part one of three parts, talking about faith and hope and healing and peace in your life and how you've been taught all wrong about faith. You have probably a wrong understanding of what faith is. So we're going to talk from a biblical basis what is described as faith. But first, let me mention this, cwowi.org and cw cwowi.eu are our websites. Our main one here in the U.S., cwowi.org. We are a house church network. We celebrate by gathering saints in the home. We rotate homes, rotate responsibilities, learn more about it. There's a lot of free information, podcasts, videos at cwowi.org. All right, so let's just get started because you've been taught wrong, most likely, or you have a wrong understanding about faith. In the West, faith is generally what I would call a mental agreement. Now, you can truly believe on the Lord, but you hear things like, you know, we were believing for healing, but he died. Or I'm believing the God, I'm believing the Lord for something, or I'm standing in faith. And it's been taught generally that a person can pick a scripture or a passage or particular verse and choose to stand on that, and they turn their Bible there, they point to it, say, I'm standing on this verse. And is that faith? Is that really biblical faith, what the Bible describes as faith? So this is part one of three. And I'll take it in smaller chunks because for many people, it'll be brand new understanding. So let's go to, for instance, John chapter 17, verse three. Jesus said, this is eternal life, to know you, the Father God, the only God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. This is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and your Son. So if faith is just believing something, then how do you fit in that Jesus said eternal life is to know the Father God and to know Jesus? You see, faith in the Bible is something much greater than just mentally agreeing that Jesus is Lord. Let's go to Ephesians 2.8. By grace are you saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves. For we are his workmanship, created for good things that he has created for us to walk in. So by grace are you saved through faith, and it's that relationship of grace and faith that I want to talk about. Because you've heard that grace is unearned favor, you've heard that it's God's riches at Christ's expense, that it's God's empowerment, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, be strong in the grace that's found in Christ Jesus. That's an empowering grace. All of that's true. But what it gets down to is that grace is a revelation. Grace is a revelation of the Father God, of his will, of his plan. It is directly to a person. So grace, besides being unearned favor, besides being empowerment, besides all of that, grace is a revelation of the Father God. Let me show that to you because grace apart from the revelation or a verse apart from the revelation isn't faith. It's hope. So let me explain this to you. You know, in, Hebrew, in Hebrews chapter 11, it's the, the hall of faith, the great people of faith. And it lists everyone from Abel to Noah to Abraham to Moses, oh, Abraham and Sarah to Moses and alludes to people like Joshua and Isaiah and everyone else. So look at that, and, and for instance, we won't get into Abel too much, except that Abel received revelation from his parents about the, the proper sacrifice to make. You may recall from Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21, I believe it is, that it says, The Lord God made coats of skins for Adam and Eve and covered their, their sinfulness, covered them with those skins. That was Christ making the very first sacrifice, the very first blood sacrifice, uh, clothing their nakedness with his own righteousness. But for them, it was a temporary thing, the coats or the clothes of, of animals covering their nakedness as a type, as a picture, as a shadow of, of Jesus who would die on the cross. And so Abel learned from that. He had revelation from that, and he offered a, a better sacrifice than Cain, who offered something out of the cursed ground, out of, out of what he had done of his own sweat. But let's move on to Noah. Noah did not just decide to build a boat. He received a revelation that it was going to flood and he received instructions from the Lord to build a boat. So that's grace. Same thing with Abel when he received the understanding from his parents 
of, about the the covering, the temporary covering that the Lord God had had killed the first animals and had made a covering for their sin. And so that clothing today is a type and a picture of the righteousness of God. And it's not something to be exalted and worshipped and everything else like it is uh, it, today. It's to be understood that it is a clothing, a modest clothing for our, uh, for our nakedness, which is a type and a picture of the Lord clothing us with his, with his righteousness. And spiritually, it says the fine linen, clean and white, is the righteousness of saints. So, uh, so that's a picture in there. But but Noah but Abel received that revelation and but it's more clear with Noah. Noah definitely did not just decide to build a boat. He received a revelation to build a boat. Now his response to that revelation was faith. See, by grace are you saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves. Faith is born out of grace. Faith comes from the grace. You can't you can't cut a connection between grace and faith. Faith by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not of yourselves. Faith comes out of the grace. We go to, to Noah. Now, the next one up in Hebrews 11 he mentions is Abraham. And go back to the life of Abraham. Abraham in Genesis 12, 1, received a revelation from the Lord to leave his home country. In Genesis chapter 15, starting in verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord appeared to Abram and brought him forth abroad. I heard a rabbi say it brought, means the Lord brought him into space. And he said, Count the stars. See if you can number them. See if you can count them, Abraham. That's how great your descendants will be. And it says there that Abraham believed the Lord and it was given, counted to him for righteousness. Now, that's Genesis chapter 15. But notice what happened. A revelation came first. And the response or out of that revelation, out of that grace, out of that unearned favor, out of that empowerment came faith that Abraham believed the Lord based on the revelation. Later in Romans chapter 4, when you look through verses 15, 16, and then continue through the chapter, it says that Abraham considered, in the Greek, it says Abraham considered his body dead and Sarah being past age, childbearing age. And it says that he was fully persuaded that what the Lord had promised he was able to perform. Go back and read Romans chapter 4. Set the context by going back into verses 10, 11 or so, and then read it all the way through where it talks about Abraham and how he was he considered the natural circumstances, but he had a greater revelation. He had a grace given to him that the Lord had promised that they would have a child of their own bodies. And it says that he was fully persuaded that what the Lord had promised, he was faithful to perform. So notice the promise came first, the, the, the revelation, the grace came first, and then the believing, and then they acted on it. Obviously, they conceived Isaac. So Hebrews chapter 11 talks about Abraham, and we see that great faith there, but it came from a revelation first. Sarah, in Hebrews 11, 11, it says the same thing. It says, Sarah... Even though she was past childbearing age, it says this, she received strength to conceive and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she had judged him faithful who had promised. Notice the promise comes first. And a lot of people today, they think of that. It's like, oh, that promise, I can just pick a verse and stand on it. And that's God's promise to me. No, 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 no. The whole, the whole basis of our salvation is based on a personal word to us. For instance, look at Peter. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 and 17, when Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you're blessed because flesh and blood, natural means, did not show this to you. You didn't turn to some scroll and say, I'm going to believe. You didn't hear, you know, the, the rumors going on and say, I'm going to believe. He said, my father has shown you this. Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. Now notice, before Peter spoke out, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, first he had the revelation from the Father. You see, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verses 44 and 45, he says, Every, therefore it is written, everyone who's taught of God, uh, what he said, let me just go to verse 45, what he said is this, therefore everyone who has heard of the Father and learned of him comes to me. You see, there is a process of revelation that goes on in a person's life. That is the grace, and it's through that grace you are saved. Faith is our response to grace. And that's where I want to pick it up next week, continuing this, talking about how faith is our response to grace. Noah built the boat. 
Abraham took a walk. Moses received the revelation to go to Egypt. He took the walk down to Egypt. Grace is a revelation. So think about that. Go through the heroes of faith. Go through areas of your own life where things were successful, where you had peace, and you'll find that a revelation came first, and then your response to that revelation was grace. All right, talk to you next time. God bless, John. John Finn, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G, part one of three about grace, hope, and faith.